to the rest of the council members, we're a little bit ahead of schedule, but we can't just to shift our time because we've published in the Federal Register and the concepts in particular, I want to try to keep to those times. We can move up the council initiated discussion and do that at this time, maybe save us a little time at the end. So your choice is a very long lunch or move up council initiated discussion. Show of hands. What is your preference? I would move up the council initiated discussion. You would not, Hal? No, I, I would. Oh, you would? Um, All right. You know, and I see I mean, nodding heads, so let's go ahead and do that this time. Uh, we can shift the, the break by a few minutes, but I don't want to radically change things. Okay, so this is council initiated. Council initiated discussion. I think most of you know the drill. This is your opportunity to request reports from us about our particular research program, your council meetings, or to bring to our attention concerns that you're hearing about in the scientific research community. We regard you as of the extramural research program. So the floor is yours. Show of hands, it's your pleasure. I will throw out um, the question, are there particular people you would like to hear from at the September council meeting? I think there was one other, Rudy, correct me. I think I think because of scheduling, yeah, we have, we have one new institute director you haven't met yet who we want to bring in. There was a scheduling problem for today. So that will be one that we will try to schedule for September. But, um, is there anybody else that, that you can think of now that you'd want us to try to approach for September or February? Steve? You know, previously there was like a NIH wide effort in um, sort of big data. Um, and so I, I guess, you know, we're, NHGRI has its own sort of approach to to big data and, and that's working out. We'll hear more about AMBL later. Is there, are there other things going on uh, with other institutes or NIH wide that, that we should be you know, hearing about and thinking about how we can leverage what we're doing to, with what other people are doing? You know, certainly Biodata Catalyst at, at NHLBI is, a, is an effort. Uh, there are other types of things going on. So I, I was just wondering, you know, since data are the most important products these days, uh, what can we do to, to make things better for people in genomics? Well, one obvious person who I think, I don't think we've brought to council very recently, Rudy, when was the last time? Was Susan Gregaric spoken to council? No, she has not. She has not. So that was, she's the head of the sort of the central data office and, and um, so I think that would make a whole lot of sense. And yeah. there's a lot going on. I mean, I think you'd hear from her what you sort of just heard from Marie Bernard in terms of, you know, all these things coming out and then, you know, trying to link not only Office of Director initiatives, but, but then with other institutes and also being a catalyst for development of things in the data science space. So I think Susan would be a really appropriate person. And I think Lindsay Criswell was one that I had mentioned. Yeah, yeah. So Lindsay, well, yeah, I didn't name the name, but Lindsay was the one that didn't schedule today. I couldn't okay. kind of conflict. Um, and so, yes, especially for lots of reasons. So, yeah, Lindsay's on the list. I don't know if we've locked her in for September, but I know she's on the list because she couldn't make it. Today. She was very sad she couldn't make it, but there was a conflict. Oh, God. Um, I have two suggestions. I don't have a specific person, but I'm wondering if uh, there's somebody that you think might be good. Uh, one uh, is probably not next, but maybe in a couple council meetings, but some, somebody to come to us once our age gets more, you know, specified and uh, gets, ahead. you know, I think that would be really exciting because there can, we can all easily, I think, see some potential uh, collaborative opportunities with them, right? 
Uh, and then the second one is actually uh, thinking about biomedical ethics and somebody, if there's anyone at NIH who is serious, especially from the, you know, sort of riffing off of the data science, right? Like from the data and genome perspective, right? So how does it fit with personalized genomics and our ability to analyze genomes and, you know, disparities, et cetera? So I, th I think your first suggestion is a, a good one. I expect when an ARPA age director gets announced, they'll get 27 council invitations within an hour because everybody wants to know what it's going to be and what it's going to look like. And what's right. So I think that's a great suggestion. Um, and we'll think about the biomedical ethics one. Lynn. Did you call on me, Rudy? Yeah. Yes, I did. Okay. So I, I just have a Rudy, question. Can I, sorry, sorry. Can I just jump in for Olga and just get some clarification about the biomedical ethics? Do you, are you more interested in just big picture um, thinking in the field, or do you want to hear more about what NHGRI is supporting? I'm hoping, I mean, as it relates, not necessarily, I guess, in between. So I'm thinking about it basically as it relates to genome and interpreting genomes and going from medicine but not, I guess, not as limited as what we're already supporting, but sort of what are the questions NIH is broadly thinking, NIH. but yes, with, within the context of the genome, right? Because I think we, we do have a specific well, of course, the is, Yes, I didn't mean all of biomedical, but yeah. That, yeah, that, so kind of that, that, within the NHGRI focus, but not only what we're supporting now. All right, that's helpful, thank you. So regarding, ARPA-H, I know there was a concern earlier that the ARPA-H appropriation might affect the NIH budget and reduce it. Um, and maybe I missed it, but is it now established that ARPA-H funding will not affect NIH funding? Well, it, so that's a, it's a complicated question with a complicated answer. Um, I mean, it gets this fiscal year, it has a billion dollars to, to get going. Um, next fiscal year, the president has asked for in his budget, you know, quite a bit more than that to, to, to build it up. Now, those are certainly happening at the same time that, um, uh, you know, and, I mean, this year we, our institute is our important in um, director's program, we got a three plus percent increase. So, you know, so sure, it seems to be separate now. You, but of course, there's a finite number of dollars to be given out. For, and so, you know, clearly, you know, you, I, I think they're, it's trying not to compete against the NIH. Clearly, nobody wants to see that happen. But the reality is everybody's working within budget limits. And so this is going to have to come at, at a cost of something else not getting done. Um, so, but, but what I would say is there's certainly, I think in general, the hope that it doesn't detract from NIH funding in general. Thank you. Joe, go ahead. Yeah, um, so probably not for the next meeting, but one in the future, because I think the landscape is changing significantly on this topic, and that's data privacy, implementation of statewide things like GDPR and and things like that. Just a curiosity or just, I think we do have to understand where the NIH is going relative to those topics. And uh, I don't think that, the, I don't think it's really clear yet, especially in the US, but I think that would be a topic for us to, to review at some point in time in the future. Yeah, that's a, it's a great suggestion, Joe, and I'm sure you're partially asking it. I, I think we've thought about this. The problem is it's sort of hard to know when to, it's just sort of constantly an evolution. And I think it's sort of hard to predict when they're signed and substantive. I mean, there are various things, especially that's, that bubble up from time to time from members of Congress, from language that gets floated as possibly being put into legislation or legislative language. And but then it sort of shifts or it doesn't get much root. Well, and, but, I, but I agree with you. I mean, I, I think this is an area we especially around genomic data, the sharing of genomic data, especially outside the US. Um, well, I, I think, Eric, there's realities that exist today. I mean, California has CCPA and they've already put legislation in place that by 2023, we'll have something in California that almost 100% mimics GDPR. You know, Michigan is on the same path. And, and I think the trend in the US is 
unfortunately somewhat disconnected because we're allowing it to be done on a state by state basis, which is going to significantly complicate things. But the reality is that at least in California, we'll see something that looks almost identical to GDPR, which is what Europe, what the Europeans have been dealing with. And we all know is the standard that I think ultimately evolves. But I, again, I, I, I live and die in this yeah. space. And, and I do think it would be good for us to know probably not the next meeting, but one in the future, because it is going to change with a, a significant amount of legislation that's coming. And maybe, Joe, you could help us identify appropriate speaker. I mean, there may be somebody in NIH, but maybe we need even a broader view than just the NIH view. So but we'll, we'll be in touch about that. Yeah, let me know. I, I know a lot of people in the space, and I think some of the thought leaders, both uh, in Europe, uh, well, globally, and especially here in the U.S., I could provide you some names. Okay, thank you. Other concerns? Okay, let me uh, make one schedule change um, to accommodate the uh, schedule of one of the council members. We're gonna flip the order of the concepts. So when we come back, we're gonna do the ANVIL concept and then the diversity genome research centers. Clear? All right, so we get an extra 10 minutes for lunch because we have to resume at 2.30. We'll Please resume at 2.30 Eastern time, correct? 2.30 Eastern time. Turn off your microphones and cameras, but do not disconnect from the meeting. Just leave it blank. We'll see you at 2.30 Eastern. Bye, everyone.